Hey, it's good to see you. Thanks for seeing me. I know you're busy. I'll be quick here. Um, I've been talking to that guy about the King James Bible, and, um, you know, he's kind of coming along, but he's asking me some questions that really got my mind going. Mm -hmm. um, two things. The first one was he said that the King James translators, I guess they added some words that maybe weren't in the originals. Oh, you know, italicized right? words, sure. And uh, the second thing he was saying is that we King James Bible believers, um, that we believe the English can correct the original Greek and Hebrew. And I hadn't heard that one before. So Okay. Well, that's kind of, I mean, actually, we can take care of both those at the same time. Uh, that second one, though, that's, that's more a charge. They, in other words, they like to make you feel guilty, put you on a defensive, like, oh, if I say I believe that, I've done a terrible thing. No King James Bible believer believes that you can correct the original Hebrew and the original Greek with the English. We say you can correct the Greek and the Hebrew that we have. Anybody says they have the original Greek or the original Hebrew is either mis misguided or outright lying. So nobody has the original Greek, nobody has the original Hebrew, and that which we have had some words missing. And yes, King James translators did add words and put them in italics. If you translate from any language, whether it's Spanish to English, German to English, French to English, Italian to English, or, or, or vice versa, <clears throat> you're going to add words to finish and complete the thought. And that's what the King James translators did. Um, when they added the words, they put them in italics, which had been done by the Geneva Bible before them. And let me show you what I mean. Now this uh, friend of yours, he would be upset with having a Bible that, that, that King James Bible because it has the words that are added in italics. I'll show you an example. Matthew chapter 1 here. Uh, and it says here, David the king begot Solomon by her who had been the wife of Uriah. Look right there. Okay, see? David the king begot Solomon by her, and now notice it says, who had been the wife mm -hmm. of Uriah. And who had been the wife is in italics. So it wasn't in the Greek, correct? I guess, yeah. So your friend would say that that doesn't belong there and that it's wrong, correct? Right. Okay, well, see this right here? Mm -hmm. That's not a King James Bible. It is a new King James. Hmm. So if your friend says, well, you know, I just have a problem with words being added by the translators, then he doesn't have a problem with the King James. He has a problem with the King James. He has a problem with the New King James. He has a problem with the, uh, the English Standard Version. He has a problem with the New International Version. In fact, he has a problem with every Bible on the market. Let me ask you this. Uh, you were brought up in church. Yes, sir. And uh, heard about the 10 plagues uh, over Egypt when the Lord was trying to deal with Pharaoh to get Israel out of Egypt. You believe there's a plague of flies? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. Well, look at Exodus chapter 8. Look at verse 21. Else if thou wilt not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies upon thee. What do you notice about the word flies? It's italicized. Look at verse 22. Italics. Yeah. Look at verse 24. Italics? It is, yeah. How about 29? And he removed the swarms of flies. Flies, flies, flies. You want to know the truth? The word flies does not appear anywhere in Exodus chapter 8. That it's not in italics. So how do we know those were flies? How do you know they weren't swarms of mosquitoes? They come in swarms. How about we swarms of bees? Look at Psalm 78. And read verse 45. He sent diverse sorts of flies among them, which now, devoured them. Is the word flies in italics? No. No, because it was in the Hebrew. That's how we knew Exodus was flies. So question, who killed Goliath? David. You think? Yeah. You really believe that? Because I believe it. Okay. Well, one of the classics and uh, one of the most devastating things that happens to modern translations is pulling those italics out. Look at uh, 2 Samuel chapter 21. And look at verse 19. And there was again a battle in Gob with the Philistines, where Elhanan, the son of Jerah Oregum, a Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath the Gittite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. All right. Now, what do you notice about the brother of? Um, it's in italics. Okay. You know, modern translations take those words out because they're in italics. But uh, here in the, the um, ESV, it says this, Elhanan, the son of Jerah Oregon, the Bethmite, struck down Goliath the Gittite. 
uh, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. So they took the italicized words out, and by doing that, they inserted a double problem. Have you ever heard anybody say this? Lost people say this. Well, the, the Bible has contradictions in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the King James Bible doesn't have contradictions in it, but modern ones do. You were told that David killed Goliath. Well, you were told David killed Goliath because in 1 Samuel chapter 17, it says David killed Goliath. And in the SV, in 1 Samuel 17, it says David killed Goliath. But then you get to 2 Samuel chapter 21, verse 19, it says Elhanan killed Goliath. Hmm. That's a contradiction. But it doesn't put a contradiction in the Bible. It puts two contradictions in the Bible. Go to 1 Chronicles chapter 20. And 1 Chronicles chapter 20 is a parallel to what you just read. In other words, it's just a second accounting of that battle. And look at verse 5. And there was war again with the Philistines, and Elhanan the son of Jair slew Lami, the brother of Goliath the Gittite, whose spear staff was like a weaver's beam. In this ESV, this English Standard Version, <clears throat> it has two contradictions. It says, David killed Goliath, and Elhanan killed Goliath. Then it says, it's a contradiction, it says Elhanan killed Goliath, and it says Elhanan killed the brother of Goliath, in the same battle, at the same time, double contradiction. It's kind of like this, kind of like this. Um, I got a, a little uh, story coloring book for one of my grandkids. This, this coloring book has a mistake in it. It says, David threw a stone and hit Goliath right in the forehead. But we know from the ESV that it wasn't David. It was Elhanan. And I think this, if they can scratch words out of the, out of the Bible and, and put different words in, I guess I can correct a coloring book. And so I'm going to take David out of there and I'm going to put Elhanan killed Goliath. So if a guy says, I have a problem with the italics, the King James Bible because they added italics, but he doesn't have a problem with the New King James or the ESV or any other modern translation, then he doesn't have a real, real issue. And it shows you that that's not a problem in his head. He's not mistaken. It's a problem with his heart. And you have to ask yourself, and they need to ask themselves, how come only that book, the King James Bible, how come that's the one that they, they don't like? Well, you need to take that? Uh, no, no, it's just that guy from before. Oh, your friend with the questions? Yeah. Hey, why don't you ask him, who killed Goliath?